only on floor tonight, the public gets a chance to see what police have been studying for three years. Body camera footage from the shooting at Sim School Highlands Ranch. This video highlights the quick and brave response from the responding officers. They didn't hesitate. It also shows, though, the obstacles that they faced, important lessons for first responders at similar events in the future. Kendrick Castillo was among the heroes that day. The student was shot and killed while tackling one of the gunmen. But Kendrick certainly saved the lives of many classmates and teachers. Deputy's body camera video shows the urgent to get right to the point of the threat and stop the gunfire. It has taken three years for that footage to be released as we waited for the two shooters to be sentenced, and both will spend their lives in prison. Our CBS4 investigator, Katie Weiss, filed a Colorado Open Records request, and she obtained that video. For the first time, Katie is asking the sheriff about that day and the changes that followed in bettering school safety. It's our top story. We've obtained body camera video clips from two responding deputies that day. The clips are 30 minutes each of those deputies initial entry to the school when the shots first broke out. They show how the school was locked down so well that even law enforcement couldn't get in at first. Something the sheriff tells me is a major lesson learned. Yes, we have a shooter in room 107. May 7th, 2019. Shots fired. Douglas County Sheriff's deputies get the call for an active shooter at STEM School Highlands Ranch. School Two students had just opened fire inside classroom 107. 18 year old Kendra Castillo shot dead trying to defend his classmates. Eight others injured. Each door deputies approached was locked, forcing deputies to break their way in. When I see these videos, I get very anxious because I know that every second counts. But Douglas County Sheriff Tony Spurlock tells me somehow as if by divine intervention, the door closest to the shooting was the only door open, allowing those officers to get in fast and detain the shooters. It's an, uh, an emergency uh, egress door, really. It's not a door that, that is designed for kids to come uh, to and fro. So it may have been a stroke of luck that that door was open at that point. It, it could have very been. Do you think the outcomes of that day would have been much worse if your officers would not have been able to get into that one unlocked door? Oh, I think so, because those officers that came into that other door, all of those were detectives. Those detectives don't carry with them uh, batons and um, glass breaking, breaking equipment that a regular officer wears on his uniform. Yeah, it, it could have been a lot worse. The body camera video we obtained shows other deputies responding to help those detectives. One deputy breaking a glass front door with a baton, then using chopping equipment to break the lock of a second larger wooden door in the foyer. Another deputy's camera shows a group of law enforcement standing outside around the corner, seemingly unsure of how to proceed. The deputy helps them break the glass door to enter. From there, they move from hallway to hallway, making sure the area is safe, helping students hiding in bathrooms and classrooms. This way. I think what happened is what is done across America every day, which is appropriate when there is a situation, and, and often this school has the ability to do a lockdown, so all the electronic door locks lock. Since then, Sheriff Spurlock tells me his office worked with the school system to get more access key cards that work at all 128 school buildings in the district. And he's beefed up school shooter training for his deputies. I've told him before, I can replace all the windows in every school in this district, okay? I can't replace any kids. And so when you get there and you know it's a situation, just start breaking stuff. Just break in. And thankfully, we've had companies that have donated doors for us so we can have the training. Because if you've never done that before, it, you know, you have to practice it. The sheriff says he's also collaborated more with the school district, even giving school principals radios to communicate with deputies. And can say, don't go that way. It's the wrong way. Come this way or, you know, guide us. The Douglas County School District received additional security funding after the shooting. The sheriff says he advised the school on ways to use that money for school building upgrades. And his office received some money to get more school resource officers. Now DCSO has 24 SROs across the district. We have worked together with them on equipment purchases and also some of the security around the building. Uh, and it would help us so we can visually see things. 
We have talked about internal security inside the building, so if it, it does get locked down, how do teachers protect themselves? In the meantime, Spurlock doesn't think arming teachers is the answer and hopes the state will make even more mental health resources available to students. Until then, the sheriff says he believes they've learned a lot since tragedy struck three years ago. The shooters in the hallway. And he's ready in case a call like this ever goes out again. I believe that we are very well suited right now based upon training and equipment and resources to handle a situation. I'm just, I hope and pray every day we never have to use them. Kenny Weiss reporting for us. Colorado law enforcement agencies have all made it clear their priority is always to engage with the active threat first and take it out.